Welcome to Wasteland 3 review, you mutating bastards. I have finally beaten the game, therefore I'm ready to pass judgment on this new In Exile game. If you have watched any of my previous reviews, then you know I judge how game is now, meaning my experience with it and how good it can be in the future after patches and updates. This is important to understand, as Wasteland 3 is currently in beta state. This is by far game's biggest issue right now. Game is so glitchy, buggy, unpolished, runs like crap and very unbalanced even 10 days after release date with only one small patch released fixing maybe 1% of all the issues. It is a shame that in Exile have confirmed once again they are notoriously bad at polishing their games. Release day state of Bard's Tale 4, Wasteland 2 and now this game are unacceptable. I love In Exile, they are my favorite developer for some time now, but I cannot let them off the hook for this. Fool me once, fool me twice, fool me three times now. Maybe it has something to do with Unity engine, I really think Wasteland series deserves better engine, as it is not small game from Penelope Studio. Still no excuse for such bad release day state. It is going to be heavily reflected into overall score. Good news though, everything broken can be easily fixed and the game can be rebalanced to provide much better experience. I'm sure they will do it soon and I can't wait for them to do it so we can finally get to play Wasteland 3 in all of its glory. Oh and it is glorious I tell you. This was my most anticipated game since it got announced 3 or 4 years ago because I love original Fallout games and Wasteland 2 and besides the aforementioned technical and some balancing issues game is amazing. I always preferred the writing style of old Fallout and new Wasteland games to writing in games like Baldur's Gate and Pillars of Eternity. Walls of text were always my enemy in those games. I understand it paints better picture, it is incredibly detailed, adds more lore bits and brings lot of immersion into every dialogue, but I usually start skipping over a lot of that stuff rather quickly as it becomes tedious to slog through every single conversation. In Exile writing style is right up my alley, concise, effective, enough lore bits and tidbits so you are not drowned in it, brutal, uncompromising, pop culture references and funny as hell. To me they are most humorous developer today, can't count times I have laughed out loud while playing this game. Oh, hey, this chick was Fowler's mom. <laughs> she was daddy's rebound after Lara tried to over... Poor little Cleo. <sighs> Stupidest woman I've ever met. No sense of humor. Good thing she didn't last long. Story continues right after Wasteland 2 as rangers are in trouble after devastating events in Arizona. They desperately need supplies and Patriarch, Warlord of Colorado State is offering just that in exchange for Ranger's help in dealing with his kids who are trying to take his throne. For me main story delivers on all fronts, even though story of Wasteland 2 pulled me more and was a bit more atmospheric. Patriarch kids are vastly different and very interesting, dealing with all three will lead you across big state of Colorado, meeting eccentric crazy characters along the way with plenty of interesting quests with different outcomes. One of the strongest things in Wasteland series is power of choice given to player to make drastic changes to outcome of almost every quest with vastly different results and rewards. Let me give you two quick examples. In Denver you can choose to help communists that are robots, zealots that worship Ronald Reagan or screw both of them and help rangers. One solution grants access to only place in game as far as I know where you can modify your rangers with cyborg tech. Other solution grants unique gun and some other things. Third one I have no idea but you get to piss both of these factions off. Another example, eventually you are going to run into cannibals and disgusting as they are they offer a very good reward which is full set of power armor if you can stomach them. There are many choices like that in the game and I love it, lots of factions you can align with as well. Quests generally have really good writing and interesting characters connected with them make it even better. Companions are fantastic for the most part and you will love some of their reactions to your decisions. Lots of unique reactions from each companion. Whoever this man was, I hope he never had any offspring. 
If you want to complete everything and you will want to experience it all, it can take usually 50 plus hours depending on difficulty and playing with builds. Traveling across Colorado is done in vehicle that can be upgraded in many ways to fight off radiation, increase its defensive and offensive capabilities. Awesome thing is random encounters on the map and few missions let you use this vehicle to truly show your enemies what terror is. Running stuff over with it never gets old. Locations are very well done as they have lots of interesting stuff usually. Clown gangs beneath city, gauntlets, massacre sites, mysterious sites and so on. Overall world is well done with enough detail and diversity to keep you interested and world map looks great. Not every location is great as some smaller ones do not offer anything unique or interesting but bigger locations have a lot to offer. Ranger HQ is your base where rangers are recruited, companions hang out, new rangers arrive and vehicle is maintained. I do feel like this is missed opportunity a bit as they could have done something on the side where these rangers are taken on missions to collect resources with simpler level up system or something like that. I have to commend radio that constantly gives you new stuff to laugh at or to create some mystery. This was done amazing in Wasteland 2 as it created very atmospheric moments during long journeys. Wasteland 3 radio is more humor oriented than atmospheric, which is fine. Many different crazies tell their stories over it. One of my favorite ones is the story of Bigfoot that unfolds as you progress through game. They are building up this creature that no one has properly seen yet. I won't spoil it, but it is really great. Or random person asking at what temperature you have to cook human that is specific size. There are many amazing stories like that and I love it. Now let's talk combat. It is vastly improved over Wasteland 2 combat, at least vanilla version of Wasteland 2 that I played. Buffing, debuffing, healing, taking cover, crouching, setting up ambush, reviving, throwing grenades, using turrets, hacking, charming animals. It is brilliant, but flawed in some aspects that can be fixed. Add to that ton of weapons with different bullet types, weird science stuff that can shrink enemies and you are in for lots of depth and fun. However, game is very unbalanced at the moment and needs fixing to be more enjoyable and less critical hit and exploit oriented. Critical hits occur far too often on both sides and are too devastating. It takes away from tactical depth unfortunately. There's also issues like shooting through walls or solid objects, glitched animations, exploits with different perks and abilities. There is also too much ammo in the game. In Wasteland 2 I genuinely had problems with ammo but not here even on highest difficulty. Lots of things to fix, armor penetration system is weird as well and doesn't really work that well. Only heavy assets can reduce damage, as lighter versions are easily penetrated so armor rating means nothing in that case. In that case you only benefit from some status boosts like critical hit chance, critical resistance, healing bonus and so on. Perks, attributes, quirks, background and lots of aesthetic options are involved into creating your character. There is enough depth to play around with lots of builds and it is not overly convoluted. I quite like that. It is important to balance your team so they can take on most challenges ahead so you are going to spend lots of time creating rangers and thinking how team can benefit from them. I do not like however that you can create rangers over and over again for free with no repercussions takes away from role playing element as you can ditch anyone at any given time. Note that rangers and companions are two different things, companions might leave if you make decisions they can't stand. Party consists of four rangers and two companions. Character progression also has problems due to some quirks and perks being far better than other ones, which leads to a lot of these becoming obsolete. They really need to balance it out. Attributes on the other hand are very well done as every attribute really brings solid benefits. So overall character progression and build potential is great but it needs balancing and polishing. Graphics are serviceable. I just wish in future they ditch Unity as it does disservice to this game. Aesthetically game looks great with great looking weapons, armor sets and different enemies but Unity brings it all down. Audio work is hit and miss. 
voiceovers are fantastic, weapon sound effects are great for the most part, but some are bugged and sound way too quiet. And the music is great, but misplaced in my opinion at times. Sometimes out of nowhere game starts playing some country song for the duration of whole combat encounter and it just doesn't fit as it sounds forced. Not saying music genre doesn't fit, I'm saying the way songs are introduced during those few combat encounters is not done well. This brings me to conclusion. Despite its problems in version 1.10 on PC, platform that I played it on, Wasteland 3 is still a very fun game with great writing, story, quests, characters, world and combat that needs lots of patches and fixes to reach its potential. There are far too many technical and balancing issues for me to give the game as things 10 more than 6, which is decent game. However, I am very biased towards original Fallout type games, as I love the setting, craziness that comes with it, funny writing, solid character progression that granted needs polishing, so I am giving Wasteland 3 in potential category my first 10 ever. It is game tailored to me and what I like. With balanced patches and technical fixes, this is in my eyes a masterpiece. Will it ever reach that? I don't know, doubtful. But it can reach 9, which means amazing game, very quickly. I simply love the game despite its fixable problems. That would be all, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the review and see you soon.